Hello everyone, welcome to my series in nuclear and particle physics. Today I want to talk about the meson theory of nuclear forces. So I want to start this video with a very simple question. Inside the nucleus, there are two kinds of particles. One is a neutron, the other is a proton. The neutrons are neutral particles, while the protons are positively charged. So my question is, since protons are positively charged and positively charged particles repel one another, how can so many positively charged particles exist inside the nucleus in such a tiny amount? of space. The nucleus is usually very very small. Even the largest nuclei have a radius of around 7 femtometers where 1 femtometer is of the order of 10 to the power minus 15 meters which is a very very tiny space. Just so that you appreciate the nature of this problem let me do a very simple calculation. So if you look at two protons which are near each other let's suppose if there are two protons which are at a distance of one femtometers then we can calculate the coulombic repulsion that exists between these protons but the coulombic repulsion that it exists can be found simply from coulomb's force law so if we put up the values of this constant and electronic charge and a distance of around one femtometers it turns out that this calculation gives us an amount of around 230 newtons so this 230 newtons this is actually quite a large force imagine that there is a, a human child okay a small child maybe five six seven years old and he weighs around 23 kilograms or maybe you have a little bigger child okay uh, so if you if you pick up the child who weighs 23 kilograms he has a basically a gravitational pull of 230 newtons downwards that is the amount of force between two subatomic particles two subatomic particles two protons at a distance of one femtometers are repelling one another by a force of 230 newtons that is quite huge so how is it possible that if two protons repel one another by a force of 230 newtons that they are still together inside the nucleus and not just two many of them are existing inside the nucleus which is a very very tiny region in space the reason is that there is another force apart from the repulsive force inside the nucleus and that force is known as the nuclear force and the nature of the nuclear force is actually very interesting. First of all, at a distance of 1 femtometers between two protons, there exists not just a Coulomb repulsion of 230 newtons, but there also exists a nuclear force which is attracting them. In fact, if you calculate the nuclear force between two protons at a distance of 1 femtometers, it turns out that the nuclear force is somewhere around 25,000 newtons. That means it is 100 times more powerful than the repulsive force that exists within the protons but this nuclear force is not just uh, attractive it can be repulsive as well so if you look at a nuclear force it can be both repulsive and attractive so it can be repulsive and attractive depending upon the distance at which we are looking at it so if you look at the nature of the nuclear force and how it varies with distance you will find that the nature of the nuclear force varies according to a graph which looks something like this all right it basically tells us how this force varies at different distances so for example uh, we can look at different distances here let's suppose this is r and this is the nature of the force okay so at distances less than 0 0.8 femtometers okay at distances less than 0 0.8 femtometers this nuclear force is actually very repulsive uh, it pushes the nucleons apart and this is necessary because if you do not want the nucleus to collapse onto itself because of such a huge amount of attractive force then you need to uh, balance it by repulsive force at even shorter distances so at distances for around 0.8 femtometers or less than that the force is repulsive while at distances from let's suppose 0.8 to up to 2 femtometers somewhere around 2 femtometers, uh, this is an attractive force. It is extremely attractive at a distance of around 1 femtometers and beyond 2 femtometers, uh, it is negligible. So the nuclear force is repulsive at short distances, less than 0.8 femtometers. It is attractive in a distance from 0.8 to around 2 femtometers and beyond 2 femtometers, it is negligible. And this nuclear force acts between all particles. It acts between neutrons and neutrons. It acts between neutrons and protons. It acts between protons and protons. 
So in a way, the nuclear force is actually quite interesting. You know, uh, it, it shows attractive as well as repulsive nature depending upon the distance. It exists between neutrons and protons, all kinds of nucleons. All right. So one of the first successful theories which explain this uh, behavior of the nuclear force was given in 1935 by a Japanese scientist by the name of Hideki Yukawa. Yukawa gave what is today known as the Yukawa's theory of nuclear force or the meson theory of nuclear force. What he basically said is this. He said that the nuclear force exists as a result of exchange of particles. It means that neutrons and protons are continuously emitting or absorbing another particle which is known as a pi meson. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit just but first let's understand what is happening. He said that neutrons and protons are continuously emitting or absorbing up another particle and whenever nearby neutrons and protons emit and absorb particles then this leads to the effect of a force which is known as the nuclear force. So before I talk in detail let me just give you an analogy of this kind of an example. So an analogy of this kind of an example can be shown by two children who are playing catch catch let's suppose okay so uh, the uh, yukawa said initially that we can imagine the, uh, uh, um, the force which is a nuclear force by uh, asking a question that are neutrons and protons playing catch catch all right so let's suppose that there are two children who are playing in the field or in the park all right and you are looking at them from far away and let's name this these children okay let's suppose that uh, uh, one uh, girl has a name of sita and the other has a name of ram okay and ram and sita are playing catch catch so sita throws the ball uh, to Ram, Ram catches the ball, Ram throws it back to Sita, she catches the ball, she throws it back again to Ram, Ram catches the ball. Alright, they're playing, they're enjoying it, they're trying to make sure that they do not drop the ball. And you are looking at them from far away, then you see certain peculiar things. What is a peculiar thing? So first of all, when Sita throws the ball at Ram, alright, when Sita throws the ball at Ram, she experiences a little bit of a recoil. Because she throws the ball forward, she experiences a little bit of a recoil. And when the ball reaches Ram, then Ram basically tries to catch the ball and he has to move a little bit forward to sort of catch the ball because so as to balance the momentum. So when Sita throws the ball forward, she moves a little bit backward because of recoil and when Ram catches the ball, he has to move a little forward to sort of balance the momentum. So this uh, 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 it resembles a transfer of momentum from Sita to Ram which is equivalent to an action of a force. Yes? First thing. Now second thing, as Sita and Ram are playing together with this ball, they are not in a constant place. Sometimes Sita moves forward, then backward. Sometimes Ram moves forward, then backward. So let's suppose that Sita throws the ball very far away, then Ram has to travel backwards to catch the ball. All right, then Ram again uh, basically catches the ball and uh, uh, throws it back to Sita at a very small distance, let's suppose. Then Sita has to come forward to catch the ball. Now remember that both of them are basically trying not to drop the ball. And in this effect, they are moving forward and backward and forward and backward. Uh, both of them are moving forward and backward and forward and backward so as not to drop the ball. Now they cannot come too close. You see, they cannot come too close because if they come too close that they cannot play, play catch catch anymore. They will start colliding and they cannot play catch catch. All right. And they cannot go too far either. If they go too far, then uh, one of them is going to lose the ball. They don't want to lose the ball. All right. So in a way, you, the, you are looking at them from very far away, right? You're looking at them from very far away and you make a, a conclusion. You make an interesting conclusion. You say that because both of them cannot come too close, otherwise they will stop playing catch catch and they, they cannot go too far, otherwise they will stop playing catch catch. Uh, they have to remain in an intermediate distance. So you say that both Sita and Ram, even though they move back and forth and keep on moving back and forth, are somehow connected by some nature of a bond here. There is some kind of a bond which is holding both of them together so that they cannot come too close and they cannot go too far away. So this whole process, this playing of catch-catch is creating the effect of a bond. It is creating the effect of a force which is holding Sita and Ram together in some intermediate distance. The nature of nuclear force is exactly the same. 
So if you imagine that one of them is a neutron and the other is a proton, then you can say that both neutron and proton are continuously exchanging some kind of a particle in between them and the exchange of the particle is creating the effect of a force which is holding both of them together. This is in a sense uh, a very layman's way of explaining the meson theory of nuclear forces all right so this is the meson theory of nuclear forces uh, where Mies, uh, yukawa basically said that the effect of a nuclear force is a result of an exchange of particles and this particle he named as pi meson so he said that these particles which are continuously being exchanged between neutrons and protons are known as pi mesons and there can be different kinds of pi mesons there can be positively charged pi mesons there can be negatively charged pi mesons and there can be neutral pi mesons which are also called as in short as Pions. So, these pi mesons or pions are being continuously exchanged between neutrons and protons to create the effect of the nuclear force. Now, if you look at the nature of transformation that takes place, what happens is that whenever, let's suppose, a, a proton particle uh, creates a pion, then you end up getting a pi positive and you end up getting a neutron in its place. While on the other hand, if a neutron particle absorbs a pion plus, then it becomes a proton. This transformation takes place, all right? Proton emits a positive pion, becomes a neutron. Neutron absorbs a positive pion, becomes a proton. And in this transformation that is happening continuously between neutrons and protons, we get an exchange of particles uh, which creates the effect of a force. So this theory is known as the exchange of particle theory or Yukawa's theory or meson theory, meson theory of nuclear forces. And we can uh, use this to get an estimation of the mass of this kind of uh, uh, a pion particle. So if a pion is being uh, emitted by a proton and a neutron to create the effect of the nuclear force, we can use this idea to estimate the mass of the particle. So let me draw a series of diagrams to replicate the exchange of this pion particle between neutron and a proton. So here I have shown the certain stages in uh, exchange of this particle. So let's suppose there is a proton which is near some kind of a neutron. The proton suddenly emits a pion plus particle and automatically becomes a neutron. This pion plus particle travels this intermediate distance and reaches the neutron which now transforms into a proton. So this exchange of the particle between the neutron and the proton continuously happens over time to create the effect of a nuclear force. However, if you really consider that this kind of effect takes place, then the pion has some sort of a mass, yes. However, if let's suppose the pion is emitted from uh, a resultant neutron, then it should mean that this particle should decrease in mass by the mass of the particle. So this should have a mass, let's suppose mn minus m pi positive, yes. Whenever the nucleon particle emits or absorbs a particle, its mass should change or reduce or gets added by the mass of the pion. However, experimentally it is not seen that the mass of the neutrons and protons keeps on fluctuating over time. So how is it possible that if indeed a particle is being absorbed and emitted continuously, then that there is no change in the observed mass of those nucleon particles itself? Well, we can uh, give an explanation based on what is known as the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. So the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle basically gives us an idea that if this kind of a process is possible and yet not detected in measurement because uh, all physical quantities uh, that can be measured have a certain accuracy. All right. If you measure certain physical quantities, then their accuracy is limited by the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. So when a particle is being released and absorbed, then there is a transfer of energy which is taking place. And if this transfer of energy happens very, very fast, then Heisenberg's uncertainty principle basically tells us that the transfer of energy that happens in this process over a time period t are both related by the uncertainties associated with them by this particular expression del E del T H cross upon 2. So this is the uncertainty principle which basically puts a restriction on the accuracy of certain combinations of measurements of physical quantities. In this case, we have the measurement of the accuracy measurement of the uncertainty of energy and time period. So this process is possible and yet undetected experimentally if and only if the transfer of energy happens over a very short time period where the, there is a uh, uncertainty associated with them has a relationship like this. So we can apply the Heisenberg's uncertainty in the case of this kind of an example. So if I assume that the, the distance between the neutron and the proton is some sort of an intermediate distance, let's suppose it's says R and R is of let's suppose 1.7 femtometers. I basically want to give an 
estimation of the uh, 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 calculation itself not an accurate calculation so let's suppose the pi positive is emitted at some time period t is equal to 0 all right and the uh, pi positive reaches the other particle at some time period t then if we imagine that because this is such a small particle it travels at velocities near about the speed of light then the time period it takes for the particle to go from here to here is equal to how much r upon c or we can say 1.7 femtometers upon the speed of light c somewhere around that okay so if i make that assessment and i apply the heisenberg's uncertainty principle and i say that del e del t is somewhere around h cross okay i'm just interested in making an estimation so instead of writing h cross by 2 i'm writing h cross here okay to just give an estimation so what is the energy associated with this particle the energy associated with this particle is mc square where m is the mass of the pion particle all right and c square basically gives us the energy value associated with that mass so m pi on c square multiplied by t what is t the distance uh, uh, which is 1.7 femtometers divided by c which should be approximately equal to the Planck's constant cross or i can say that uh, h cross upon c into 1 by 1.7 femtometers if i put up the values uh, of these constants then i get something around 2 into 10 to the minus 28 kilograms if i compare this mass with the mass of the electron so if i divide it by the mass of the electron which is 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 kilograms then this comes out to be around mass of electron times 220 around so 220 times the mass of the electron so based on this idea of a particle being exchanged virtually very very fast between neutrons and protons so that we cannot even detect them experimentally so we use the uncertainty principle to estimate what should be the mass of such kind of a particle and the mass of such kind of a particle should be around 200 times the mass of the electron itself and in fact the success of Yukawa's model or the meson theory of nuclear forces uh, comes uh, as a result of an experimental validation later on as to the mass of this kind of a particle later on after the theory was given it was indeed found that there are particles in nature which have masses somewhat similar to the uh, this kind of a quantity that we have measured almost a decade later in fact it was found that there was a particle which is similar to the pion positive which are the mass of around 273 times the mass of the electron and there is another particle which is the neutral pion which had around 264 the mass of the electron thereby validating this kind of a calculation uh, and there is kind of a theory associated with the nature of the nuclear force as it turns out these particles are positive pion the neutral pions are extremely unstable they uh, uh, rapidly deteriorate into further uh, 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 elementary particles so here as you can see i have written how a charged pion decays into a muon and a neutral pion decays into two gamma photons and the mean lifetime of the charge as well as the neutron pions are extremely small the charged pion has a decay lifetime of around 10 to the minus 8 seconds while the neutral pion has a um, mean lifetime of around 10 to the minus 17 seconds so the moment they become free they disintegrate into further uh, um, elementary particles so this is how the nuclear forces exist inside the nucleus neutrons and protons continuously emit and absorb uh, these kind of pion particles and if they have neighbors then they continuously emit and absorb with their neighbors thereby playing a game of catch catch creating the effect of a bond between them which is both attractive and repulsive at different distances so this is known as the mesons theory of nuclear forces or the yukawa's theory of nuclear forces so that is all for today i hope you enjoyed and learned something from it thank you very much